Hello and welcome to episode number 62 of the Scottish History Podcast. My name is Owen Innes and this week we are once again continuing on with our little mini-series about Scotland's UNESCO World Heritage Site. This week we're going to be talking a little bit about the Antonine Wall. So join me for episode number 62 of the Scottish History Podcast. So when you think of walls in Britain, you wouldn't be wrong to immediately think of Hadrian's Wall in northern England. Hadrian's Wall, built between 112 and 128 AD, Hadrian's Wall itself spans 73 miles right across Britain from Wall's End on the River Tyne in the east to Bonus on Solway in the west. It marks where the Roman conquest of Britannia ended with the unconquered Caledonia to the north. To this day, many people still believe that Hadrian's Wall was built to keep the nasty Scots out of the south, which is untrue. One main purpose of the wall was actually for taxation, almost like a border, but not a border. You would pay to cross to the opposite side of the wall, etc., Hadrian's Wall also does not and never has formed the actual border between Scotland and England. There is, however, a lesser known wall built by the Romans, and this one was arguably used for defence against the Picts and the Caledonians. This is Scotland's third on our list, UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Antonine Wall. Unlike Hadrian's Wall, which was built from stone, the Antonine Wall takes a completely different shape. It was made out of mud. In 142 AD, the Roman Emperor Antonius Pius ordered an advance north of Hadrian's Wall into Caledonia and construction of the Antonine Wall began. Like Hadrian's Wall, this new wall was to stretch cross-country, This one would stretch from Old Kirkpatrick on the River Clyde in the west to Carradine near the town of Burrustaness, or better known these days as Bowness, for short, in the east on the Firth of Forth. The length of the Antonine Wall was significantly shorter than Hadrian's Wall at 39 miles or 63 kilometres in length. The Romans did establish many forts north of the Antonine Wall, for example at Lix Toll. This was named after the 59th Roman Legion, LIX, Roman numerals, for 59. However, the goal of conquering Caledonia, as we already know from the episode about the Romans in Scotland, that would be episode number 37 of this very podcast, that the Romans never actually achieved the goal of conquering north of Hadrian's Wall. So the Antonine Wall itself features a large ditch on the north side with the earth dug piled up to form the wall itself. The ditch was then to be filled with the usual fare, stuff like rainwater, dead bodies, dead animals, pee and of course Roman jobby. This was supposed to act as a deterrent to the Caledonians. Surprisingly, it didn't work. On the wall itself were wooden fences and every so often fortlets and turrets. Mostly these were made with wood, but some, still uh, parts of which exist today, were built from stone. Now the bank itself was around 4 metres high or 10 feet 
not very big if you're trying to keep out a bunch of nasty, horrible, advancing Scots people, Picts and stuff. But the ditch would make it seem higher at points. The initial plan was to actually have a fort every six miles along the wall. But this was changed to one fort every two miles, meaning that in total there were 19 forts. The best preserved of these forts is known as Rough Castle Fort in Falkirk, not too far away from the Falkirk Wheel. This fort featured stone buildings from barracks to a bathhouse and the foundations of those can still be seen at the site of Rough Castle today. Behind each fort ran a military road. This stretched the entire length of the wall, which basically just connected all of these forts together. Along the wall, the Romans supposedly also built a temple, referred to as Arthur's Own. Own being the Scots term for oven. This building stood until 1743, when a man called Sir Michael Bruce of Stenhouse Muir took the building down to reinforce a dam. The dam burst in 1748 and all of the stone that was used to build Arthur's own was flushed away, never again to be recovered. This caused extreme outrage at the time and in 1767 a man called Sir James Clark actually built a replica of on his house in Pennycook because he was so appalled. Overall, the Antonine Wall was only actually occupied for 20 years from when construction began to when it was abandoned. In 162 AD, the Romans retreated back to Hadrian's Wall after countless defeats to the Caledonians. When Septimus Severus arrived in 208 AD, he spent time repairing Hadrian's Wall, but after that, there's barely even any mention of the Antonine Wall after that particular time. To fast forward a wee bit towards medieval times, the wall was actually referred to as Grimm's Dyke. Grimm may have come from the name Graham, which in certain parts of Scotland is the nickname for the devil. So Grimm's Dyke would technically mean the devil's wall. In terms of its UNESCO World Heritage status, the Antonine Wall was nominated for this in 2003 and became listed as an extension of the frontiers of the Roman Empire section of the UNESCO World Heritage on the 7th of July 2008. But, bizarrely, the Antonine Wall itself is not listed as a UNESCO property on their map of World Heritage Sites. And there are countless places with, along that particular line of the Antonine Wall where you can see remnants of it. Um, some of these are absolutely fascinating to see. Uh, I do highly recommend it. And it's all free as well because it's all outside. You know, it's not like there's no coffee shops or anything like that. But at least you'll be able to get in and actually be able to see what the Antonine Wall was supposed to look like. So folks, unfortunately, a little bit of a short episode today, the reason being I've just simply kind of ran out of time. I even actually forgot today was Sunday at some point. So unfortunately, it's a little bit of a short episode. However, we got the information out there. If there's anything that you think that I've missed, please let me know. Contact me on the email, which is scotthistorypod at gmail.com. I enjoy just getting random emails and uh, being able to spend the time responding. So thank you very much to those of you who have done so. Uh, Otherwise, you can contact me on the Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter. You just need to look for the Scottish History Podcast or just simply at Scott History Pod. The website is scotthistorypod.com and that's where you can look for all of the previous episodes like the previous Romans in Scotland episode. And if for any reason you wish to support the podcast, which would be fantastic but you don't have to, uh, you can do so via Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash scotthistorypod and there you can donate to anything between £1 and £3 per month and that just helps keep this podcast running. 
So once again, folks, thank you very, very much for listening. Next week, we're going to be moving on to another UNESCO World Heritage Site. So I'm looking forward to bringing you that episode. So until next time, take care.